In hockey, contact is just a part of the game. And in that incessant intensity, one part of our body shoulders a heavy load. One of the most common injuries for hockey players, from NHL athletes to youth players, it involves, you guessed it, the shoulder. We hear about shoulder dislocation or shoulder separation. It may sound painful. So how significant are these injuries? And do they have any long-term effects? And why do shoulder injuries happen so often in hockey? A shoulder dislocation can happen when a player gets hit awkwardly while raising their arm overhead or away from their body. Often this happens while the player is reaching or stretching for the puck or when they crash into the boards. This injury occurs when the ball of the shoulder joint pops out of the socket. The arm's position and force of impact causes the shoulder joint to dislocate. Since the shoulder socket is flat, it's more susceptible to dislocation. A shoulder separation can occur when players get hit on top of the shoulder, when being checked into the boards or getting hit aggressively by another player. This can also happen when they fall awkwardly onto the ice and land on the top of their shoulder. This creates injury to the AC joint, where the collarbone meets the acromion, which is part of the shoulder blade. The force of impact pushes the shoulder blade down, causing ligaments to injure around the AC joint and causing a separation of the two bones. In hockey, these injuries are common because of the sport's high speed and physical contact. So, whether it's a dislocation or a separation, both can take players off the ice for an extended period of time, depending on the severity of the injury. Some shoulder dislocations cause enough damage to end a season. In the NHL, shoulder injuries are fairly common, accounting for 12% of all injuries, the second most on the upper body. Shoulder injuries are painful and debilitating. How do they limit players? And what does the recovery process look like? A shoulder dislocation affects the mobility of the shoulder joint, making it hard to lift the arm or rotate it. Often this requires us to manually put the shoulder back into place. The player then faces several weeks of recovery to allow the ligaments and muscles around the joint to heal properly. A shoulder separation affects the stability of the AC joint, which is causing pain with movement of any kind, especially when lifting or carrying weight. Depending on the severity of the injury, most players only need rest and physical therapy. So either way, hockey players will miss some time to allow the shoulder to build back its strength. The good news is that with proper conditioning, technique, and protective gear, players can reduce the risk of shoulder injuries. This includes strengthening the shoulder muscles, focusing on good posture, and improving balance on the ice. All of these factors play a role in keeping players healthy and ready to compete at an elite level. While you're watching the game, keep an eye on those hard hits and awkward falls. It just goes to show how vulnerable and valuable those shoulders are. And that's the science of St. Louis Blues hockey.